going to look at the new reflection filter in HDR Light Studio 8 Drop 2. So we've got a simple little scene here with a can and a couple of chrome balls so we can see what's going on. And we've just got one light lighting the scene here, a scrim light. Okay, so let's merge that light into a composite. And now we can apply the new reflection filter. So let's turn on reflection and everything's gone black. And this is because of the current setting. So the reflection filter lets you reflect the content within the composite in different directions uh, and in different ways. And we're going to go through uh, the settings for this now. So the first thing is the direction of the reflection. So it's very much like a, a mirroring filter. So at the minute, the left is being uh, mirrored to the right. So let's change that from right to left. So there we go, we've got our original light back and we now have got the reflected version on the other side. So if we want to make changes to our original light, then we go to the composite and we use the little arrow to go and edit the composite. And now we're inside this composite. And as usual, if you make any changes within uh, the composite, this feeds through up to the higher level so as you're working, you can see the lighting change on your render, but on your canvas, you're obviously seeing just the content that is being uh, reflected. So you won't see the reflected version as you are editing the content. And then basically what you can do is you can just start editing the lighting till you get exactly what you want. Now let's go back to the composite and just look at some more settings. So we've got the direction where we've gone right to left. We can go top to bottom, bottom to top. We'll stick with right to left. We've got the axis, which is set at 0.5, which is in the middle of the map here. So if we start to move the axis, you can see we're changing where we are mirroring from. but halfway was, for this scene, the right setting. Now, interesting, we've got some more sliders. This one is for the brightness. So if we change this, it changes the brightness of the reflected content, which is really great for studio lighting because you can have your uh, predominant light source and then you can mirror that to the other side and uh, just decrease the brightness of it, um, which is a, a common uh, lighting method for studio lighting, to have one light slightly brighter than the other. And you get all of this now within this single reflection filter. Um, so we can go back into the composite and we can do further changes and you will get that reflected version, but also it's not as bright because we changed the brightness. So not only can you dim the light that is being reflected, you can actually increase its brightness relative to the original content. So you can get the perfect balance between the lights on both sides. You can also change the alpha for the reflected content. So if I just change this to HSV A, and we start bringing down the alpha, our reflected content now becomes transparent. And we can look at that later in another useful example of how we can use that. Okay, so let's go to another light look where we've got a HDRI map in there of a room. So we'll just go to that light look back to the light list. Okay, so we've got a HDR of a room. Let's right click, merge that to a composite, and then 
choose the reflection filter and we can now explain the different types of reflection. So by default, uh, we feel the most common way people will use this is to reflect the entire lighting design. Now, when you do this, if we were to change the brightness of one side, so here we're going left to right, let's change it right to left. So basically everything on the right is being reflected through the axis. So if I just move the axis here, now you can see something a little bit unusual happening in that it's doing more than just mirroring. It's taking into account the seams of the HDRI map on both sides. So when the setting is uh, 0.5 and it's in the middle, then this just looks like it's mirroring. And actually, if I look at the type, there is a type called mirror and it will look very similar. And with mirror, you mirror the content from the right to the left, but it doesn't take into account the fact this is a HDRI. So as I move the axis this way, the content here is mirrored to here, and then there's nothing left here. So there's empty space. If we change the type to wrap, wherever I place the axis, it will reflect half through the axis to the other half. So here you've got the seam for both sides of the HDRI. So this is really handy. Um, now this also comes in handy uh, because if you see where we've got this harsh change between the brightness of one half and the other half, this is exactly why we've added this blend control. And what this will do is you increase this it will uh, soften the blend between the reflected part and the source uh, of the reflection. So it means that you can control the brightness of each uh, side of the, uh, so the original and the reflected side, but you get a soft transition if you need it using this blend control. So that makes it very useful. Now let's just look at the different types again. So we've got the wrap, which wraps uh, around the seams on the HDR. So you're always going to have um, half of the map reflecting the other half. And as you move the axis, it just determines where that axis point is for the two halves. If we look at the type mirror, as you uh, move the axis to one side, it literally mirrors this bit of content up to the axis, over the axis, and then the space on the other side. And then the final type is called fit. And what this does is wherever you place the axis, it will reflect the side. So the right is being reflected to the left. And then it will fit the reflected content into the space that's left. So we can move that right over there and just move that axis around. And if I just brighten that to one, so it's the same brightness each side, you're just kind of stretching the content to fit uh, in the reflected area. And again, that can be useful um, and we'll show you later uh, an actual example where we use that. Okay, so let's dive into another project and actually just start using the reflection filter live to light a shot and you'll be able to see how useful it is. Okay, so here we've got a model of a shaver and let's create a new composite light. And we will go to the appearance and change to have the reflection filter right to left and then wrap and all the default settings that's fine now we'll go into here and what we can do is start lighting this shaver knowing 
that the lighting will be reflected. So if I drag and drop this onto the model, perfect. We can see that we've got that perfectly reflected across there and we can just start lighting. And if we go up a level, you can basically see there it is being reflected. But as we're working inside the composite, we would just work on the right side and then let the filter uh, do the reflection for us. So let's get another light. Here we've placed a light on the seam at the edge of the HGRI map. And the other half of this light is in the area where we are reflecting to. So it's going to get covered up by its own reflection. But it doesn't matter. This all works out. And uh, if we go back to the um, composite and the, the settings, um, we could kind of show you that when you change the brightness of the reflected area, then this will create this harsh line on the reflection. And then that's why we've got the blend setting so that we can then soften uh, that join between the original light and the darker version of itself where they meet at the seam where it's being reflected. This original light here, I'm going to make it a bit skinnier bit taller. Use that as kind of a rim light and then duplicate that light. Bring one further in. Maybe play with where the light is starting. Okay, so that's just a really quick example. But if we go back and we look at the composite, you can see there is a, a, basically the whole lighting design has been reflected around the axis. And if we want to say change the brightness on that side now, we can do, let's turn up the blend value to just soften the transition there. Perfect. So that's really useful for patch shots, for product shots. Um, we've got a model of a car. Let's go and open that and have a little uh, look at lighting the front view of a car, again, using the same method. Okay, so here we've got this model of a car. And if we just turn off the filter, you'll see that the lighting has been done on the right-hand side of the vehicle. And then when we turn the filter on, we reflect that to the other side to create symmetrical lighting on the front of the car. Okay, so here's a totally different example of how we can use the reflection filter. Uh, now we're going to use this on this HDRI map to mimic a reflected uh, water, you know, a water effect uh, going over here. So if we just duplicate this and put it inside of a composite and we'll change the blend mode to over and then let's uh, add the reflection filter and we will do this from the top to the bottom now you'll see this little line down here is because we've got the mode wrap now it doesn't really make sense using wrap when you've got top to bottom or bottom to top, we would be better using fit. And I say this because we can then adjust exactly where the uh, horizon line is, where we want it to reflect from, just like that. Okay, so we'll leave it there for now. And then we want to change the alpha and bring that down so we can start to see the uh, underlying map, 
which has the original floor there. So then we're creating this kind of water effect. Now, when we use alpha to get the effects that you want accurately, we're going to turn off unpremultiply because that messes with the alpha setting on the reflection shader. So make sure you turn off unpremultiply and then as you bring down the transparency or the alpha, you'll be able to get exactly the effect that you want. Rather than using the slider to move the axis for reflection, you can do this directly in the canvas or the render view. If you go to the light paint and choose reflection axis, reflection axis. Now when we click in these views, we can position that axis. If I click here, I've positioned it. If I click in this view, so I click around, I can precisely place that reflection axis, which is much better than just using the slider. So that is the new reflection filter in HDR Light Studio 8.2. <laughs>